Uh, hi, uh, I'm going to uh, talk about notebook serving uh, this night. And notebook serving is a, uh, about uh, bringing notebook, data science notebook to the, your products and not really uh, serving some, some roles from notebook. And before uh, we start, I'd like to share some of my background. And I'm a uh, uh, creator of Apache Zeppelin. Uh, I think a couple of people here are familiar with Apache Zeppelin and also co-founder of Zeppelin. And uh, Zeppelin and Zeppelin, Zeppelin community and Zeppelin uh, here, um, uh, we were uh, addressing challenges around the data science, like uh, how can we build a, a interactive data science environment or how we can enable rapid uh, exploration of data or rapid development of model or enabling collaboration between data science team or even data science team and non-data science team. And also one of the challenges that we have is it, uh, there is uh, actually a gap between uh, data science notebook and the production system. And today I'm going to actually focus on this uh, problem. And uh, I think it's not only applied to Apache Zeppelin, but applies to any other notebook uh, out there like Jupyter. So uh, bringing notebook to the production is it, I don't think it's a really well working concept at, uh, today. You will probably end up with uh, serializing your model to your, some storage and uh, have a separating uh, separate serving system or try to call a notebook using a REST API and end up with uh, a lot of problem. And I'd like to, uh, I'd like to address uh, what actually makes it really difficult to directly serving your model from your notebook that you have developed your model and what really prevents uh, access that model from the production system. So one thing, uh, one problem is uh, uh, if your model is in your, in, in your notebook, notebook is not designed to be used on, on products and usually. So notebook can be go offline and it can be restarted for uh, configuration changes or any other reason. And even if it, it's a, if you finally make it stable, it can be, it is not scalable. It's not uh, designed for, uh, designed to be scalable. And also REST API that uh, notebook provide is not optimized for uh, your model. It's not designed for your model. So passing parameters and uh, parsing the results from those API is not uh, is not really convenient, and the uh, one of the big problem is uh, uh, notebook. Any any anyone who access to the notebook can change the code at any time. So uh, that means your products and system will change it at any time, and that that's what you don't really want. And also, notebook doesn't have an automated uh, uh, test system attached usually. So it's also a problem on, and your, your model doesn't have a matrix and visibility when they are running on the notebook. So I uh, wanted to address all of these problems and uh, I will actually show you how it works uh, instead of going through all the details here. Uh, but uh, uh, one of the goal is not only addressing all of these problems and, but also make it really simple and easy to use. So we, I wanted to make it happen, all of that happen and solve all the problem in a single click instead of, uh, you, you, you know, you need to open three different terminals and edit five, five different uh, configuration files and run maybe 10 to 15 different commands and solve that problem. That's what uh, I was aiming for. Wanted to just a single click to make everything happen. So this is the uh, architecture behind of it. So uh, the box on on the top is uh, actually dealing with in, in interactive job. Interactive job is a uh, task is a, uh, for human interaction when you use Note2 actually. But uh, we create uh, created two different types of job, which is a testing task and another is a serving task. Task test task is a um, not for uh, notebook testing and serving is for uh, serving and they are running on a Kubernetes and testing uh, test job is uh, running as a job a resource in the Kubernetes and uh, serving is uh, running as a deployment in a Kubernetes resource. So uh, let me actually uh, show you how it works. 
So this is a plain uh, user interface. And by the way, what uh, I'm going to show you is all available in GitHub. It's not yet released. It's going to be included in upcoming release, which is going to be 0.9. But source codes and source codes are all available, so you can actually try build and try yourself. And first, uh, let me try to create a notebook. Uh, notebook serving. I will type uh, the name and I will choose Python. Uh, and let me def uh, let me create a really really simple uh, classifier, binary classifier. And I can go crazy with TensorFlow and uh, you know tons of you know terabyte of data, but we don't have time to do that. So let me go the uh, simplest thing. So text. Uh, let me say my classifier, and I take uh, input a uh, one string, and return. Let's say uh, if my input is uh, longer than five character, I consider it long, and uh, if it's less than five, you know five character, I consider it short. So it's a uh, really simple binary classifier. And uh, yeah, here I run my classifier. Uh, I define my classifier. And I can actually uh, make some, uh, some very basic test, like my classifier. And this is going to be uh, true. And if I do something not really true, uh, then yeah, we'll throw an error. So uh, let me write a really simple test case and uh, to make it uh, to make it accessible from uh, notebook serving, I need to call an API called uh, add rest API. And uh, my uh, API endpoint name is, uh, uh, let's say, classify, and uh, my classifier, oops, let me try copy and paste. So uh, this is the, all the, you know, code uh, that I wrote uh, for my uh, classifier, and it's ready to serve. But before uh, go, going to uh, serving, let me, let me create a version, and this is version one. And uh, I have a little button here uh, for starting a task, test. So I just clicked and it's running a test, and it's running a, a test as a background job. So what is really happening uh, behind the scene is uh, uh, it, uh, so I can create a revision and a snapshot of that particular version of Note and also include all the necessary configuration to re uh, to have exactly the same environment and spinning up a, a, a background job in a Kubernetes cluster and um, you know Python interpreters is running as a pod and it, it's running the Note and we will soon see a result uh, displayed here because of the testing job is now finished and terminating. And let's see if it passes or fail. So test uh, test test job is just finished, and uh, now it, it succeed, right? And I can click this this one and see uh, results of the test. So uh, now I know that this notebook is safe. It's a, you know tested, and then wanted to deploy into the production. And like I said, wanted to make it really, really simple. So there is just one button, uh, start serving. And if I click uh, start serving, and it actually do uh, the similar job uh, that test does. It packages everything and run everything as a you know Kubernetes uh, pod. But in this case, instead of a job, it's using deployment. So even if something goes wrong, it will restart and it will try to uh, keep your pod up and running. So uh, the, there is a uh, serving uh, job created and Python uh, uh, process is running, up and running here. And now I can go to a uh, serving uh, menu and then I can see uh, my endpoint is actually created here. And my endpoint is a REST API endpoint is this one. And 
I can try call it uh, uh, with uh, parameters. Uh, let's say, let me say hello world. And we remember that our classifier takes one parameter, right? And return one, uh, one number, uh, which is a length, uh, which is a true or false. So I just call uh, this REST API endpoint, and I got return true for hello world, right? It's a hard, li little hard to read, but anyway, I got a uh, return true. And if I uh, call some uh, smaller, uh, string, then I got a uh, return parse. And uh, what we can see uh, also is if I refresh this uh, page, then we got a uh, metric here. So uh, by default, uh, Zeppelin provide a uh, number of calls and latency of your uh, model here. And you can actually uh, define some custom metrics here. Uh, I have a, let's say uh, this one. I have an example that how you can define custom metrics. This is basically the same example, but you can return actually tuple instead of just returning an object. And the second value of your tuple will be a map, and which will be uh, be your uh, headers of re uh, re response uh, HTTP response. Uh, so, and if your one of the value of your headers start with g dash metric dash any value then it will be recorded in the uh, metric system and you can see your metric, custom metric in your you know, uh, serving page. So you can imagine that uh, this is not really, not, only, not really designed for only a machine learning model. Of course, you can, uh, you can put your uh, inference you know, function or prediction function inside of your classifier here uh, from TensorFlow or any, any other library. But you can also do something like, uh, let's say you have a queries that can uh, gather uh, active number of users or that can get uh, you know, number of purchases in, in, your, you know, in your market for last one hour. And you wanted to uh, create a dashboard or report based on that number, but as well as you, you wanted to uh, connect, from, connect that information from and to other products and system in your you know, entire platform. So in this way, uh, you can create really, data scientists can really, really uh, rapidly uh, try and I iterate uh, with their model. And let me go back to the slide. Uh, so there are some uh, yeah, usage and I, I just demonstrated. And one of uh, the uh, the design uh, design uh, consideration of this feature was everything uh, wanted to make everything pluggable. So even though uh, there there is default implementation, just we we just uh, so uh, test uh, test is running on the Kubernetes and serving is running on the as a Kubernetes deployment, and uh, there are default implementations working, but you can actually extend it. If you want to run your test, not uh, Kubernetes, not as a Kubernetes job, but on your Jenkins, you can actually implement Jenkins uh, task. Uh, and if you want to deploy your model in SageMaker, for example, then you can extend a uh, serving task to uh, deploy your model or your uh, function to SageMaker. And the same, same for the storage. Every test or uh, serving is packaged and uh, persisted in the in the storage, well, which will be immutable. Immutable, and by default, it's just, uh, stored in the uh, Kubernetes uh, persistent volume claim using volume claim. But you can implement S3 or HDFS, and metric storage is the same. Currently, it's running a metric is stored in the Redis cache. But if you want to uh, export your metric in uh, Prometheus, for example, or Elixir, you can actually implement and extend that. So, uh, I I think it uh, this way we can address a lot of a lot of problem or fill a lot of you know many different gaps between notebooks and products and system. But I think there are still a little more things to do. So one thing that I didn't uh, show is uh, uh, although it's it. Uh, leveraging Kubernetes uh, deployment. Uh, Auto-scaling is not yet implemented, so it's one, one, one of the things uh, in the to-do list. And 
uh, you can actually deploy multiple version of the same node or multiple version of your you know uh, um, API and modules and it really makes sense to bring that capability to uh, you know a b test features and also how we can integrate a review process in this uh, workflow that's uh, I think an open, open question and also training how do we want to do that and there are a couple of other uh, future works uh, and uh, Apache Zeppelin is an open source and uh, we really uh, welcome and need your uh, inputs and feedbacks so we can uh, go into the right direction and if you can involve uh, one of these uh, work that's even better. So uh, yeah, uh, of course there are a lot of related work about uh, serving the model, but I think uh, of a model existing in your, in your notebook is still uh, very hard to uh, bring it to the production. So this is what uh, uh, I was trying to address today. And yeah, thank you.